Good afternoon, Beckman Catholic community. Here's today's update on some items that we have for you to share. It's gonna be a little bit longer than the one from yesterday because we've got some more developments in the last day um, in terms of knowing a little bit more about what's gonna happen with classes and um, all of that good information. So bear with us today as we go through more of these pieces. All right, so I'm sending this out just around 4.15 p.m. So information's current as of this time. Um, so a little bit about what's happening in Iowa, once again, as we've done that the last couple of days. Uh, earlier today, the governor declared a state of emergency, a public health emergency, essentially, in the state of Iowa. Um, in the proclamation, there's a number of items included. You've probably heard about it if you've been paying attention to the news today. Um, one of those is the closure of bars and restaurants, um, allowing those in institutions or those entities to make takeout and delivery services still available. Um, the governor's also put a, or a, a mandate out that there's a limit of no more than 10 people for social gatherings. Um, and that's gonna be effective through the end of the month. If you're interested in knowing more details about all the things that are in that uh, declaration, you can go to the governor's website uh, and that is included there. It's also on the Department of Public Health's website as well. Um, so a little bit more about what we, last night I said things were being uh, in development when I gave my update. Um, we know what those things are now, so I wanted to share a little bit about that today with you. Um, here's what we know from that guidance and the bills that were passed. First off, the current four-week closure that started yesterday and runs basically through Easter will not need to be made up at the end of the year. The legislature passed and the governor signed the bill that granted a waiver for that to happen. So those days will not need to be made up. Uh, the bill also allowed the governor to waive additional days if uh, this, long, this uh, initial four-week period of schools being closed has to be extended. So that way the legislature doesn't have to come back um, and address that issue again. We also received more guidance from the Department of Education in terms of what can be done in the interim. Um, and some of you who uh, maybe have friends or, or acquaintances with Western Dubuque know that they released some information about that last night. Um, we've worked as an archdiocesan group of schools today on that information as well. Um, what the Department of Education has stated is that online learning opportunities can occur during this time, uh, but it has to be an optional item for students. We can't use it for issuing a greater credit, but we can uh, provide some of those opportunities. So we met today uh, as administrators from the archdiocese. We're meeting every day uh, at one o'clock in the afternoon with the Office of Catholic Schools to get updates, um, to share information about things that are happening um, so that we can continue to stay up to date on what's, what's occurring. So we had our update today. That's why you'll probably see updates from us after that meeting because then we'll have more information to share as days move forward. Um, we've started with some initial plans this morning about things to do. We wanted to make sure that the plans we had would, would uh, be okay with the archdiocese moving forward as well. And so we're gonna continue to work on those. I don't have full details to share with you this afternoon. Um, because we're going to work with staff on those over the next couple days to get those up and running. But what I can tell you today is our goal is going to be to provide opportunities for learning for our students. Um, that will include the opportunities as well for some interaction to occur, not face to face, obviously, with the situation that's going on right now, um, but we will have some opportunities for students to interact. So staff is going to be meeting tomorrow to review and discuss these items. Um, that we'll be providing. So be on the lookout for more information over the next couple of days. We hope to have stuff out to you um, by late this week, Thursday, Friday. Um, but as you've seen, things have rapidly changed day to day. Um, so that's our goal and we hope to be able to meet it. But uh, if something were to happen, we may have to push that back a little bit. Um, but because we cannot continue regular coursework per the Department of Education's guidelines, I just wanna make it clear that students, when they're allowed to come to the building on Wednesday, you will not have to have your textbooks at home for this break because we won't be doing um, work through that at this point in time. So speaking of material pickup, that's been a big question I think a lot of you have been waiting for. Um, so this is how this is gonna work tomorrow. So please pay close attention to the next, probably about two to three minutes of what I'm I'm going to talk about students. If you're planning to come to the building, I need you to pay attention to this as well. So we will allow students to come to gather items you'd like to have at home tomorrow starting at 9 a.m. till 3.30 p.m. You'll be allowed into the building alphabetically in groups of 10 for 10 minute intervals. We're doing that to um, abide by some of these rules about the number of people who can be in places at one period of time. When you come to school tomorrow, the front main door glass doors will be open 
but the wood doors you would go through normally that are locked during the day will continue to be locked. You will need to come uh, to school, into school and check in and check out on a, on a check-in and check-out sheet that Gwen will have in the office. If a parent would like to accompany a student, we will allow for that, um, but it is not necessary for a parent to come with. So if students want to come individually, that is just fine. Um, like I said, you'll need to enter school through the main office door. Uh, I'm gonna, if you're able to see my little screen up there on your, on the right side of your screen, um, I will be sending a list out that'll be attached to the email when this video update goes out, which includes your time that you're allowed to come in. In some instances, some families might have a student that can come at, let's say, 9, 9.20, and the other student comes at 9.30. Um, we'll see how, we're not sure if everybody's going to be able to come, so we'll let you know if it's okay to go in or not, or if you need to wait that 10-minute time frame. Um, what you should be coming in to get is things you feel you'll need over the break period, and we're asking that you do not linger after getting them. So the idea is to come to the parking lot, come into the building, check in, go down to your locker or, or potentially to another classroom like the band room if you need to pick up your instrument or something like that. Um, get what you need, get back to your car and head home. I know you'd like to be able to talk with friends and, and mingle, but the idea is social interaction and social distancing is something that's very important that we practice right now. Another thing that I need to stress is if you are coming to school, you need those who are coming to pick up stuff need to be symptom free. No cough, no fever, no sore throat. If you feel sick, do not come tomorrow. Um, that's just, we need to do that at this point in time for everybody's health and safety. I know when you look at the list, there's a good possibility that the time you've been assigned is not gonna work for tomorrow. We are open and willing to make alternate arrangements. Gwen has agreed that if you call her um, here at school in the office or send her an email, she'll work with you to arrange an alternate time to come get stuff. And we will work as best we can to make sure that you get the materials that you need. An update on college classes. Again, NICC classes for this week are canceled. Uh, NICC is working on additional information. We received an update from them uh, earlier this afternoon. Um, dual credit classes are an interesting piece because they're high school credit and they're also college credit. So the question becomes, can, you know, what do we do in those situations? Because the college has different guidelines and procedures than high schools do. Um, so NICC is reviewing and trying to determine what students will need to do. Included in the email to, or today with the link to the video will also be an attached uh, letter from NICC just outlining kind of where the current state of things are, along with some recommendations for students in college classes on what they should be doing um, until NICC continues to work through this information. Students that are in St. Louis University classes uh, earlier today, some of the principals at the high school level in the, the archdiocese met through video conferencing. Xavier High School in Cedar Rapids also has St. Louis U classes. Uh, they've agreed to be the primary point of contact for the archdiocesan schools that are involved so that not all of us are inundating St. Louis U with information. So they're going to take the lead on getting information for us, and once they have that, they'll pass it along. Driver's Ed, I don't have any updates on that other than what we provided yesterday, that classes for the week are canceled. When we receive more information, we will try to get that out to you. Uh, just a reminder that there is a Costa Rica meeting because we've got to think of positive things. So Mr. Neighbor's thinking of going to a warm, sunny place in 2022 with students um, for, a, for a trip. If you're interested in that, going on that trip and want to know more information, Thursday night, six o'clock, hop on your computer. Um, Mr. Neighbor will be there and we'll go over trip information. Uh, to get the link for the meeting, you need to go to the website that's listed here. I will again send the slides out today uh, in the email that goes out so that if you want to just go back and link to there, you can do that. Um, and again, the email will have that additional um, information for the link. An update from the Archdiocese as well. Um, they released information this afternoon that the Pastoral Center, um, that's their main office in the in Dubuque will close to the public starting on Thursday. Again, the best thing to do to get additional updates on, on things changing with the archdiocese is to go to the website, uh, dubuquearch.org slash coronavirus, or if you go on the main page, there will be links there as well. Um, also included today in the email is a letter with additional information related to COVID-19 with some tips and recommendations. So I would ask that you take time to review that information. 
um, take a look at it, use it as a discussion point with your families as well. Um, one thing I forgot to put in my PowerPoint that would fall under this section as well is we did learn from the city of Dyersville that they have closed public offices for the next 30 days. Um, that includes the public library as well. If you need services from the city, uh, the best thing to do would be to contact the city office and they'll make arrangements for what you need. But right now, walk-in services are, have been suspended. Uh, again, same slide as we had yesterday. If you, uh, what else can you do? Continue to keep people impacted by this situation in your prayers. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, the Archbishop will be doing some live streaming of the rosary and the information he sent out yesterday as well. He's, he's encouraging folks to pray the rosary at this point in time as, a, as it's a powerful method of prayer. Contact us if you have questions or concerns. As we continue to progress with this, fewer and fewer people will be in the office uh, for shorter amounts of time. Um, the recommendations and advice are that we continue to try to work from home as much as possible. We'll have some limited hours that we're going to work through, and as we have that set, I will uh, inform you of that. Um, but email is probably going to be the best method of communication if you need to get in touch with us moving forward. Um, and again, continue to watch for more updates and changes. Uh, if you're looking for updates in regards to things that are happening as well, the Department of Public Health and the CDC's websites that are listed here are good as good resources also. Um, so we'll be back tomorrow with some more information for you. Um, and again, we will see many of you coming to school tomorrow. Um, again, that's going to be a quick drop in, drop out to get what you need. Thanks.